Welcome to my channel, KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very budget-friendly, relatively quick, and absolutely delicious and easy keto spicy tuna sushi roll. And besides tasting amazing, the great thing about the sushi roll, it doesn't use cream cheese to keep the kali rice bound together. While I'm making the sushi roll, I will also share tips and explanations because this version has a bit of a twist to the original recipe. And if you want to show your support for my channel and encourage me to keep making videos, please watch the entire video all the way to the end. The YouTube algorithm looks at certain stats like watch time, like, comments, etc. Also, do check out the end links for more recipe recommendations if you like this particular recipe. First, let's look at the macronutrient ratio for this spicy tuna sushi roll, which is 1.5 to 1 with 12 grams of total carbs, 4.3 grams of soluble fiber, 1.6 grams of insoluble fiber, resulting in only 6 grams of net carbs per entire sushi roll, which is 8 individual sections. And if you're worried about the cost of making this tuna, just a heads up, I will not be using raw sushi grade tuna in this sushi recipe because it's very expensive to buy the right quality raw tuna and it goes bad quite quickly. In spite of the adaptations, once you make this recipe you will love the final taste and it ends up being a fraction of the cost by making it my way as opposed to using raw sushi grade tuna. So let's get started. One of the first things that I'm going to show you is the way that I make my kali rice for this particular recipe because there are many ways to make cauliflower rice but I have found for the best sushi texture it's important that you make your kali rice a bit coarser and a bit larger in size and you can achieve this by hand cutting it to make your coarser kali rice begin by separating the head into large florets Take one of the florets and cut it into about half inch or slightly larger than one half centimeter wedges. And I strongly suggest that you also in incorporate the bits of stem. And that's because when the stem portion is cooked, it adds very nicely to the texture because it provides a bit of firmness and as a result gives the sushi a better mouthfeel. Because the kali rice is so important to the sushi roll, I think it not only looks aesthetically more pleasing, and the texture is much nicer. And as I make this recipe, you'll notice that it's not just about combining and layering the ingredients, it's also about the technique and presentation, because it does matter how the final product looks. You want it to look as authentic and restaurant quality. After all, you're worth it. And it doesn't take that much longer to up your game and presentation skills. As I mentioned in the past, my mom was a European trained chef de cuisine and she drilled into me that presentation matters as much as taste that we first eat with our eyes. It has to appeal to our visual sense. Even though I didn't have an interest in cooking when I was growing up and I was really terrible at it, I did help my mom in the kitchen and I was her sous chef that did all the cleanup. I want to pass on the pearls of wisdom my mom shared with me. Okay, let's get back to making the cauliflower rice. As I said, I prefer to rough chop the head of cauliflower into small pieces. After slicing the wedges, it's time to slice the cauliflower rice to about one quarter inch or one half centimeter little cubes. You don't have to be precise. You'll notice that some of the pieces will be smaller and others a bit larger. That's exactly what you want, a variety of texture. While doing this, it is very important that you do not cut the cauliflower into two small pieces. And the reason is, when you cook the cauliflower or stir fry it, the cauliflower will release some of the moisture and as a result, each little piece will shrink a bit. And I do want to emphasize, I like the larger size of my cauli rice, like I'm showing here on this cutting board. When you've done your first Florette, then repeat with the rest of it until you've completely riced all the cauliflower you will need for this recipe. I began with a medium sized cauliflower head and then I used about half of the head. One of the questions I've been asked in the past is can you make your cauliflower by just doing it in the food processor? 
I have tried that and it works for some recipes, but for this particular recipe, because I'm very sensitive to the texture that I want for the sushi, by using a food processor, the size is too small and does not have the best texture. I also tried using the large holes on my box grater. I really like this technique because I don't dirty the food processor, but for this particular recipe, the texture is just a little bit too fine. So again, please do it by hand. And to show you what I mean by the texture difference, here's a comparison of the two methods, the hand and the box grater. One last point, if you make your cauliflower rice too small, the texture will be much clumpier and mushier when you make the final sushi, instead of looking like individual rice grains. Once you've chopped your first florette by hand, you'll realize how easy and quick it is to make, and quite frankly, it's worth the extra effort. After you have rough chopped the portion of the cauliflower that you will need, set that aside for a moment. The next step is to pan fry the cauliflower rice. So I'm going to heat up my wok, or you can use a skillet, and I'm going to set it on medium-low heat. Pour in the oil, swish it around to coat the entire bottom of your wok or pan, and even if you're using a non-stick, do this step because it will make it much easier to toss the cauliflower as you're preparing it. Depending on the size of your wok, you may want to stir fry in a couple batches and that's to prevent the cauliflower from steaming, which would give you that really soft, mushy texture, not what you want. What you really do want is your cauliflower rice to be crispy or al dente. So my first batch, I'm going to toss in about half of the cauliflower rice. Then use your spatula to spread the cauliflower rice over the entire bottom of your wok or skillet. Because we're not adding any water, cover the pot with a lid and this will help keep the natural moisture as the cauliflower is stir fried. And every 30 seconds or so, lift the lid, toss well, flatten out and cover with the lid and repeat. It should take you about two to three minutes per batch. And when you think your cauliflower is getting to the right degree of doneness, do test to make sure your cauliflower is cooked through but still has that nice firmness before you transfer the cauliflower rice to a bowl. And now it's time to do the second batch exactly in the same way. When you're done, set the bowl of al dente cauliflower rice aside. You want the cauliflower rice to cool completely to room temperature. It's really important. And while I was stir frying the cauli rice, I also bloomed my chia seeds so that the chia will be thick and sticky when I'm ready to use it. To bloom the chia seed, just take your chia seed and water, stir it well so that the chia seed doesn't clump, and set it aside. It should only take about 15 to 20 minutes for the chia seed to be ready to use. I will explain more about the use of chia later. Now let's prep the rest of the ingredients by first cutting the green onions or scallions into small pieces. To make the scallion pieces a bit smaller, just chop the cut pieces a few times. Then transfer it to a mixing bowl. I'm going to use two cans of well-drained yellow fin or skipjack tuna. These have the lowest mercury in the flesh of the fish. And in my opinion, I think it has a better flavor than the white albacore tuna, which is more expensive and, in my opinion, is quite a bit drier. After draining, toss the tuna into a mixing bowl to the bowl with the green onions. By using the canned tuna, this is a simplified and much more budget-friendly spicy tuna sushi version that is also adapted to be low-carb, gluten-free, and of course, good for our keto diet. The next thing I do is add the mayonnaise, also add the Frank's Red Hot Sauce and the sesame seed oil. Then toss well to combine everything. The next thing I do is to the bowl with the cooled cauli rice, add the mayonnaise, and you can use whichever mayonnaise you feel most comfortable with, including your own homemade. And if you have some homemade stuff, perfect. And to give it a more authentic sushi rice taste, I'm going to use rice vinegar, not apple cider vinegar, because I think the apple cider vinegar is stronger and will affect the final taste. Then, drizzle in your fish sauce and the sugar-free tamari. Then toss well to combine everything. 
And to this bowl, it's now time to add your bloomed chia seeds. Toss everything well. Then let this rest for about two to five minutes because you want the kali rice to absorb the liquid ingredients and all the wonderful flavors you've just added. By looking in the bowl, as you can see, the cauliflower has stayed a little chunkier rather than clumping and becoming a homogenous, mushy mass. Here's another reason why we use the chia seed. The chia seed will absorb any liquid that has not previously been absorbed by your kali rice. Absorb that taste and will enhance the flavor of your final sushi roll. And that's how we get away with not having to use cream cheese. And I think cream cheese actually has a very distinct taste that would be noticed in this recipe. Here's a little tip for you. For easier cleanup, put your bamboo sushi mat inside a large Ziploc baggie. When it's time to clean, just clean the outside of the Ziploc baggie with warm soapy water and rinse well. Now, lay one sheet of nori shiny side down onto your sushi mat. Scoop about one cup of prepared sushi kali rice and distribute it evenly over the bottom two thirds of your nori sheet. Leave the rest of the nori uncovered because you will need it to seal the roll, which I'll show you how to do later. Next, using a one tablespoon scoop, place four tablespoons of spicy tuna mixture along the bottom and on top of the cauliflower rice along the entire length of the bottom, like this. The next thing you do is distribute a quarter of your Vietnamese daikon and carrot pickle and lay it beside the tuna. By the way, adding this Vietnamese and carrot daikon was something that I came up with and I hope that you like it. Let me know what you think. And if you haven't seen my video how to make this relish, the link for this video and the formatted printable recipe that can be translated are all provided in the description box. But if you don't have the time, to, you can use fresh carrot and daikon. To roll, take a hold of both the nori and the sushi mat. Roll the mat over the filling as you tuck in and squeeze very gently. Then lift the mat, reposition it, and continue rolling as you gently squeeze until you reach the end of the cauliflower rice section. To seal and have the rolls stick together, then lightly wet the entire length of the nori sheet with a bit of water. And then immediately finish rolling to make a nice tight roll and seal. And that's all there is to making the sushi. So the last thing you do is you transfer your sushi roll onto a cutting board. And the best way that I have found to cut it up into even sections, to get clean cuts that do not fray the nori, wipe the blade of a serrated knife with a damp towel dipped in vinegar. Cut your roll in half and then clean the blade between each cut that you make. That's very important. To get eight even cuts, first cut the roll in half, then each half into half again. This will give you four quarters. And cut each quarter in half, which will give you your eight equal sections. And for lunch, I think that one complete roll or eight sections will contribute to a nice sized lunch with maybe a salad beside. If you haven't made sushi before, it will take a little bit of practice to get the rolling technique down. But after you've made a couple of these rolls, you'll find that it's very quick and easy to make. And in fact, from start to finish, it takes me less than 30 minutes to make these four rolls. But as I said, it, it does take a little bit of practice. And now it's time to enjoy. I hope that you will find this budget-friendly version of my spicy tuna sushi roll recipe a really tasty addition to your low carb, keto, and gluten free lifestyle. One thing I'm trying to do in this new series is show you that you don't have to sacrifice taste or healthy food while still keeping to a good budget. I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. And if you like my recipe and videos, please share the link with a friend or family member. This helps my channel. As always, your support is greatly appreciated. I have one more special recipe that uses dou chow, which I will share in the next video. So please come back when I post that one. Until next time, I hope you have a healthy and happy day. Cheers!